this is a bad movie. I had to be partners with the teacher. Because I was so popular. So. I got a lunch table all to myself. <laughs> the other kids were intimidated, right, Mom? <laughs> I've always been this way. So. There wasn't always a podcast. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because sometimes, but not always, it means getting to see Eric Estrada in his underwear. I'm your host, No Illusions. Oh yeah, was it? This is we had a good one this year, this week. I'm your host, No Illusions. We're coming to you live from a sold out crowd at the Madison Square Garden. I, I appreciate you guys sounding like so many people right there. Well done. Well done. It's, it's audio. They have no fucking idea. They don't know. They don't know. All right. Actually, we're at the beautiful People's Improv Theater. We're going to thank everybody at People's Improv Theater for taking such good care of us tonight. And with that out of the way, joining me, ladies and gentlemen, from stage left, please welcome my good friend, Heath Enright. <laughs> you, <laughs> you realize... <laughs> That there's already a drink for is <laughs> two drink minimum there <laughs> at a time. And of course, also joining me from stage left, please welcome my bad friend Eli Bosnick. <laughs> t-shirt. Who wants a t-shirt? T-shirt. Yeah. No, yeah. Eli, no, 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 no. We discussed this. No, T-shirt, T-shirt. No, we clearly no. said. We clearly said. Sh show, show them. Show them. <laughs> now, now just hand someone the T-shirt. Who wants the dumbbell? Who wants it? That's a bad idea. You shouldn't have raised your hand. That's how people die. That's what killed Adam West. Too soon he was 88. No. No, it's He wasn't right. at an Ariana Grande concert. Relax. There was an explosion. You should know. Yes. No, you're, you're just fine. You're just fine, Eli. By the time this comes out, it'll be Tuesday. That'll be old news. Everybody will be good. All right. Now, just I want to clear this up up front for legal reasons. Um, did you bring with you today any invisible wards? I did not. Okay. I did not. There are right. no babies. All right. Awesome. No space work babies. Apparently, I brought an invisible social worker for no reason at all. All right. So now that we got that cleared up. Tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? Yeah, we watched The Cross and The Switchblade. It's the story of how Pat Boone ended all the crime in New York City in 1958. It's been none ever since wow. using Christianity. Wow! Yeah. Or what I like to call, I took up the white man's burden, you're welcome, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's more like it. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you feel like all West Side Story missed was an awkward white guy asking to get stabbed, you will love this movie. Well, now, we should point this out, too. Heath, tell me, uh, how true was this movie? Great question, Noah. Uh, you mean, like, racially? Like, in terms of <laughs> Let's how get it into represented it, the different races? Because, like, I mean, in is, terms of, like, you, do we, we have a... Where's Andrew Torres? He's a Latino. <laughs> Is, Did you bring your switchblade, Andrew? Do you, on they, a scale from one to fire sauce, how true was this movie for your childhood? That's a sauce they offer I, at I Taco like Bell. Sauce. He said sauce. Ten being the best. I feel like, just as a general rule, it's safe to assume I never meant in terms of race. All right, well, so put it on the board then, if you want it to be a rule. <laughs> so, they yeah, so apparently this movie is the true story of uh, David Wilkerson... Uh, and how he was so badass that all the gangs in New York took him in and made them 
made him their king. <laughs> and according to Wikipedia, this movie has been seen by 50 million people. It has been translated into 30 languages. It has been seen in 150 countries. So I guess the logical question now is, where does that put it in terms of worst global pandemics? It's like better than rats in Europe, uh -huh. but worse than the Macarena. <laughs> Also, where I had it. I was going to say, like, right after the Republican Party, like, wherever that is, the Grand Old Plague. <laughs> GOP. I don't like to get political on this show. It's weird, off putting. This show has gotten so fucking political. <laughs> I just want to enjoy some laughs for once. Is that okay? Can we just leave it all at the door tonight? We're all on the same side, really. <laughs> and is there anything you guys want to nominate this for being the best at being the worst at? <laughs> I'm going to say best worst, white people trying to name black people. Oh, my God. This, <laughs> and think about And there was a time in history when white people actually <laughs> named black people. <laughs> You're Brian now. <laughs> yeah. Alan. Toby. It's, this, but this is worse. It, the first two black people we meet in this movie are named uh -huh. Little Bo Peep. Yep. And, and, and Bottle Cap. <laughs> Look, I'll buy that Little Bo Peep was an artistic choice, and I use that term very generously, but there's no way battle, Bottle Cap wasn't a look around the table moment. Just like, <laughs> and then her brother, Bottle Cap. So is this like the character you wanted to call typewriter? No, it's just... No. <laughs> typewriter, because he punches so fast. <laughs> okay, so I actually wrote down... For my best worst, I actually wrote down something that I have since become very upset to learn is not inaccurate. I wrote down best worst fake gang names, but after speaking to Noah, these are not fake gang names. No. There was a gang called the Mau Maus. If I got murdered by a Mau Mau, I would refuse to go into the afterlife. <laughs> they would be like, here you go, there's heaven with the blowjob robots. And I'd be like, no, nah, I got killed by a guy who calls himself Mau Mau. I'm going to stay here until a Steven comes along to stab me again. And then I will pass forward. I just can't. I only get one. And I just, I can't be a Mau Mau victim. <laughs> Like, the people legitimately ran in their lives, and they were like, oh, my God, here come the Mau Maus! Like, then they <laughs> were afraid. I can't deal with it. <laughs> right, so I actually had two nominees for Best Worst. Uh, but my first was uh, Best Worst Omission of Yakety Sacks During the Fight Scenes. <laughs> now, there are, like, three different times in this movie where they have these big gang rumbles. And if you just imagine, damn, 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 everything makes perfect sense. Because, like, the people constantly, will, like, they'll stop and just air fight with one of the guys that's near them Heath, or something. will you reenact the gang fight with me for a second? Gang oh, fight. please, yeah. please, by all means. What you're hearing now is the audience's jubilant reaction to Eli and Heath's brilliant physical comedy. Are they rolling on the floor together? Is mimed gay sex involved? Is unmimed gay sex involved? You don't know because you weren't there. But there's still time to catch us live in Seattle on July 8th. So check the show notes for details and find out once and for all who fucked who. This... <laughs> okay, this is, this is now about the penguin pants. This is no longer a reenactment. I know what's going on here. That's the most exercise we've done all year. <laughs> that was not smart. That was not smart. Oh, my God. I shouldn't have gone all the way to the front uh, and then back. Yeah, it's, that's okay, guys. It, this it, is what CrossFit is like. <laughs> it's all right. It made for some great radio, though. That's the important thing. Should have come. <laughs> sorry, man. Can't get off work in Jersey. Oh, I'm sorry. I rented a theater. No big deal. It's a long way. So it's almost as far as I came. Got to get here. on the PATH train. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I guess if this movie taught us anything is that crowds in New York carry machetes everywhere they go. Uh, so we promise we're going to keep this break brief, and when we come back, we will... I, I'm sorry, I borrowed a little slang from this movie. We will slap dad all our gringles to the flipped-out bow-wow mutton that is the cross and the switchblade. <laughs> All 
All right, guys. I think I found us a writer. But uh, before I bring him in, you have to put these on. What the hell are these? You can't see anything with these on. No, yeah, I, I know. But he, he had a doctor's note. Apparently, he's so Caucasian, it's actually dangerous to stare directly into him. Um, all right, cool. So, Don, come on in. Wow! Jesus. Hello there, fellows. Don, great. Thanks for coming in for the interview. I want to let you know in advance that we really like your work. So this interview, it's something of a formality. It's you know, Yeah, a big deal. so uh, tell us, Don, why do you want to write Christian movies? Well, brother, it's either this or sneak into Mormons' houses and give out revelations. I see, I see. Now, this story takes yeah. place on the mean streets of New York City, so what we're looking for is someone who really knows urban lingo. Mm-hmm. Well, it turns out that I am supremely qualified. You'll be happy to know that some of my best friends are black. Wow. Oh, oh, excellent. I don't have any of Great those. for this. Okay, so just a quick rundown, just to test your qualifications. What does jive mean? It's an herbal beverage. That oh, is that so much means? sense. Huh. Huh. Okay, uh, other one, uh, bonus. What does it mean to be funky? Of or relating to bees. Wow. Oh, geez. Never would have guessed that. That makes sense now bees. when I think about it. Bees, right. obviously. Bees, yeah. Okay, obviously, you know way more about this than any of us. Just one last one. What does jitterbugging mean? It can actually be substituted for any verb. Amazing. It's That's, like All right, smirks. you are hired, my friend. That's, you are hired. It's going to be so useful. Excellent. Uh, one quick question. Uh, what kinds of things are black people called no idea doesn't matter do they have names do we have to address them directly are we sure <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown live from new york city and we're gonna start this movie off with a long and storied religious tradition of saying i know this is gonna seem like bullshit but it's not. It's not. It's not. It's totally true. A true totally story. true thing. And they, so they actually have this whole, oh, this was based on a true story. This happened on the hard, hard streets of New York City. Of Chelsea. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. It, it shows the 59th Street Bridge. The it, thing, it happens in Harlem. It shows the 59th Street Bridge. You are four blocks away from Broken Glass Alley where nine-tenths of this movie takes place. It's a Starbucks now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just a Mau Mau working behind the corner. You, you need to order soy. You can't pretend that you ordered it here, sir. You need to go back. And, <laughs> it's 40 cents more. I'm a Mau Mau. Mau. I love that that's just your random experience at Starbucks that you just pulled out right that's there. That's what happens at a Starbucks. So, and I snap at them. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> they love it. <laughs> I use nicknames a lot, first names. Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Nicole. <laughs> oh. so. I drink a lot of spit, is what I'm saying. I drink a lot of spit. Not all of it on purpose. <laughs> Jesus. So they, we focus on a switchblade. Yep. yep. And they all go to kill some random guy. He looks like Peter Laurie. We never find out why nope. they're killing this gentleman. Also, no. by the way, did you guys know that uh, the noise a switchblade used to make in the 50s yeah. anyway was a slide whistle? Ooh. That was a slide yes. whistle. That was yeah. When you would open a switchblade. That would be even worse. You get killed by a Mau Mau and the last and it was noise you hear. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I got to wait and hear something. <laughs> this is too much. Too I much. Also, so the whole movie starts off with this, this gang chasing some just random guy through the park, and they eventually catch him all Daniel LaRusso style. And then they go to, they set upon beating him, the 15 of them, but they all stand on the same side of him, like all on the foot side. They really work the calves. <laughs> and each other's faces. It's like 15 people trying to yeah, be right. chains flying, they're all hitting it, each other. It is a slightly more aggressive prayer circle. <laughs> <laughs> so. So they, they beat up this guy, and then they all run off. And apparently in this gang, what they have is they got a, 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 a chick whose job it is to walk around and gather up the weapons after the beatings. So we get to meet Weapon Girl. Weapon Lady. She's just like, weapons? Weapons? <laughs> weapons, gentlemen. Frank. Frank. Weapons. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. But one guy 
Drops his fucking nunchucks. Drops his nunchucks. Nunchucks! Drops his Mau Mau nunchucks. <laughs> and the cop sees him, and it's like freeze tag. The cop's like, oh, you drop it on the ground, it's mine now, or you're in jail. Yeah. Oh, apparently, yeah, he couldn't run at that point. So now we cut straight from there to those same kids in court. Don't worry about these kids. We will never see them again. Nope, won't ever matter. Um, I, I feel like this scene is more about the lawyers than the defendants, though. So these lawyers instantly get into a fist fight. It, instantly, he's like, it, so it, tell my client what happened right after. You motherfucker! I will stab you in the heart! So my question is, Andrew, we have Andrew here. He's our legal counsel. <laughs> Andrew, how often... I just need to lean over my mom and her fiancé and my 14-year-old sister. I just need to lean over him to make this joke. (laughs) How often in your... That's a true story. Andrew, how often in your experience during a trial do you need to stab a bitch? (laughs) Not often. (laughs) So you're saying it happens. Commentary it's, retracted. It's, I told you, it's a true fucking story. Just Andrew at Covington and Burling. Don't look at me in the eye. See something beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the That's boy. a Book of Five Rings reference. Thank you for getting that. Got some samurai in the audience tonight. <laughs> How weird would it be if a samurai just got up and stormed out, just like, no. God there are, damn it. There are lines. Ching, chong, ching, ching, ching. <laughs> You're misreading that passage. It's actually, it's not what it's about. <laughs> it doesn't say to kill all the Jews. It's, it's, like, it's like the Quran. It's not. Totally, yeah, I get it. So, so the lawyers are about to have a slap fight <laughs> when who should burst in? I think it's Tom Brady. Yeah, it like, sure looks like it, but Pat Boone... Yeah, and we're gonna learn that he's bursting into like prophetize for no reason. Like he just he just wanted to come in. Like his idea was like, ah, Jesus, <laughs> that was his plan. <laughs> but he's very much acting like he's gonna murder. He's like walks in with a knife and he's like, we'll cut some bread to celebrate the Jesus we all believe in now. So he gets stopped by the police, and he seems entirely surprised. Yeah, well, he was not hurting anyone. <laughs> um, seems pretty obvious to me. But, but the cops drag him out of the, out of the courtroom, and they, they, they pat him down. They find his Bible, and they're like, check it, it's probably got a gun in it. Okay. Um, and they also find his preacher license? Or yeah. what? His ordination papers. Oh, okay. Paper. Yeah, they carry those around mm-hmm. with them. And they're giant, too. They're like a king delivering a message size scroll. <laughs> <laughs> this guy plays pretend. <laughs> <laughs> I love this moment, too, because apparently all the reporters are super excited because nothing's happening. So they're really excited about this preacher bursting in. And all the photographers gather around to take a picture of him. They're like, hold up your Bible. Hold up your Bible. Okay, now it's a tiger. It's a sexy Bible. It's a sexy Bible. You're a sexy religious zealot. Show me sexy. Show me sexy. Show me scared. Show me scared. (laughs) Pat Boone just slowly unbuttons. But but this is very important. This is a very important plot point because he will now be front page news everywhere in New York because, you know, of the walking into the room that he did. And through the rest of the movie, everyone that meets him is going to be, you're that badass preacher that walked into the courtroom and tried to help those kids. Everyone in the greater Manhattan area. Yes. Yeah, exactly. They all saw that shit. So we cut, we see that in the newspapers, and then we cut to Pat Boone, who apparently is sleeping in his car, which seems bad unless you've actually had an apartment in Manhattan. <laughs> it's a, a 50s car is way more spacious oh, than yeah. where I live. I was just like, oh, oh woo. <laughs> Not pooping where I sleep? All right, who's the queen? <laughs> and we should point out that as we're getting the intro, the music in this scene oh is me and Heath improvising Hats Off to Botswana at Guns Point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Hats Off to Botswana. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm gone. The music. 
the music pitch perfect. <laughs> So you don't get my pitch perfect if, if references. You guys, if you guys were here yesterday when we were doing the tech check, you'd that totally was, get that joke. I am always podcasting. We stepped out my 24 fault, hours ago. You should have been here. <laughs> <laughs> but he is being robbed by the little rascals. I was going to say the uh, uh, Fat Albert gang, but yes. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But like at age three. <laughs> well, yeah, right. The Rugrats. Yeah. Let's go with the Rugrats. Yeah. Dickensian infants <laughs> are stealing the car. And the car, I don't know how cars were made when Noah was a mere 45-year-old man, but the car comes apart at the lightest touch. At one point, they just remove the hood. Five-year-olds are just like, Poof. Yeah, no tools. No tools are Never. involved in any of this. The car just falls apart. Honestly, if your hubcaps come off that easily, you didn't deserve hubcaps. No, yeah, no. It, he had a snap-on car, apparently. So, so these kids realize that there's a guy asleep in there. So the one kid walks up to the boss kid. This is, by the way, bottle cap walking up to Bo Peep. Um, Stay current. Somebody wrote that down and just went, okay, my work here is done. I have finished my writing. So, yeah, so they, she walks up, he walks up to Bo Peep and he says, there's a dude in the car, what should we do? So she gives him this really detailed uh, mugging instructions, which is stab him and I'll take his wallet. Some, I believe it was something that along those lines. That is how you lines. mug somebody, yeah. right? Well, no, it is, I mean, it is. But the, the rapists and vultures of horror could have used her help, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Wouldn't and, have been any high fives off to the back or anything. Let's just point out, <laughs> it, I guess he mishears her because what he hears is karate demonstration. This oh is what God. this looks like. This is what this looks like. Yeah, no, I, I, I'll, I'll be karate man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bottle cap. <laughs> that is... What I'm saying is we needed... We needed a little more in the way of instruction for that mugging. I have no doubt they did realistic fight choreography the first time and Pat Boone got stabbed in the heart. <laughs> he was like, yeah, and Pat, you take the knife away. And Pat was like, absolutely. <laughs> so we'll shoot again in six months while they take this <laughs> out of me. Everyone's first day back. They're like, Pat, how you feeling? Pretty good. All right, let's shoot the scene. <laughs> All right. <laughs> six more months. So... <laughs> So yeah, so he, he ninja fights a, a, a very young uh, kid and wins. He's, he's pretty badass. Um, and this is when they start to recognize him from the newspapers. This is the first of like 8,000 people that will say at some point in this movie, hey, you're the guy from the front page of the newspaper on Tuesday. We, all of us now know you. Um, and so she decides that she loves them. He, he's awesome. He's got mad street cred. So she orders all the other kids to put his car back together. And they do. They do. I mean, it looks like Heath's car, but they do manage. They're just like, yeah, no. Uh, it's they start singing the Lollipop Guild song <laughs> and just re like stickers. They just <laughs> and it's a car again. It's all put together and burned. They're like, there you go, like a speed team. Just, view, view. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, so he says. Now he is there apparently um, because he's been sent by his church in in Pennsylvania to go solve all the crime in New York. Which is, by the way, what Heath and I are going to do when we're done tonight. We, we were inspired by this film. Um, so, but... <laughs> Duh. How else are you going to do it? So, yeah. So, but, but she's so impressed with his court interruption skills that she volunteers to go introduce him to all of the baddest-ass gangs in New York. Like little girls often do. Yeah, she... She's got a real hookup to all of the gangs in New York. <laughs> and he just goes with her, too. He's just like, all right, so we're going to all the gangs. And she's like, yeah, I tried to stab you like 30 seconds ago. Why yeah, would you yeah. not trust wanna, me entirely? Why wouldn't you want to walk down a dark alley with me? Um, but, 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 but first, by the way, he has to give away his shoes to Bottle Cap. Right, because Bottle Cap lusts after his shoes in this movie. He, there, is a, there is shoe porn in this movie. He's just like making a no, wingtips. And he gives him the shoes, and immediately Bottle Cap's like, I don't want your shoes. <laughs> I love to. Okay, so right at the end of this, the, the, the little girl says to the, uh, to the guy, she's like, um, you know, all right, well, I'll take you to these badass gangs, but don't you be telling them about no Jesus or they'll stab you. And I'm like, that is exactly what Eli says before he takes people to my place. So, <laughs> but, except, except she can't quite pull it off. No, it's the worst version. Everything in this movie is like, I'm a jive-ass conky and I'm going to monkey, right? But except for this scene, thank you. 
thank you. The Church of Lies rap album comes out next year, and oh, we would Jesus. really appreciate your support. No, but everyone speaks very well, except for this one thing where she's like, oh, man, don't talk to him about Jesus, and then stab you so full of holes that you could water the lawn of where you're from, assuming someone filled you with water. <laughs> You would have to turn using different holes. You would or probably have to like turn and then come back real fast and then turn like a sprinkler and then come back like that. You would have to but maintain the water while you travel to the place. <laughs> but then once I'll come and introduce you to a prostitute in an alleyway. Just come on. Just fell apart. So now they go to the badass part of New York, which is by the way, Eli's neighborhood. That's where they go. Like, the guy who works at my bodega was like, Hello, I am immortal! And I was like, Ah! Hey, Jen! You've always been there, huh? So they, they walk down a series of alleys. Again, this man has just wandered down a series of alleys with a young girl that tried to mug him minutes ago. But he goes ahead and heads down this alley with her, and this is where we meet um, the lookout girl. Oh, baby Liza Minnelli! Baby Liza Minnelli, yeah, exactly. Uh... And she is... Because you know how if you have a badass gang, you have to put somebody pretty badass out front so people know. Well, you don't not- just put a person. You put a, um, like a ninja warrior obstacle course. Well, actually. that is. The- the, there's this alleyway. All, all of Harlem was apparently a ninja warrior obstacle course. Yes. Yeah. yeah uh-huh. Until the Clintons put their base of operations there, it was just one long alleyway that curved around itself, <laughs> filled with broken glass. That's all it was. <laughs> That's basically what we see, yeah. So the, the little girl there that's the... There, there's literally like an 11-year-old girl is, the, is, their, is their lookout. And she's like, no, you can't go through. And like, what are you going to fucking she, do? She behaves the way I behave with my wife's friends because she recognizes them from the paper. She's like, oh, my God, how are you? And Bo Peep's like, you've never met before. And I'm like, right? How are you? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it's you don't all look the same. Forever. So... So, and also, by the way, this girl could not more clearly want to fuck Pat Boone. Like, she, she basically just throws it out there. She's like, hey, you know, um, also, if you want to fuck, we're in an alley anyway. It seems like the time. You're and a preacher. I'm underage. This is kind of natural. I look like natural. I kind of fits the pattern. And, and then Bo Peep pulls him aside, and <laughs> she says... Five, because she's like, give me five dollars, I'll show you in the game. He's like, she's like, just so you know, five dollars gets you two marijuana cigarettes, her body, her body, and two bits change. <laughs> Those were the days, folks. <laughs> Do you have any idea how much I PayPal Andy Wilson a month? <laughs> it's crazy. Andrew Inflation. does. At least one of us knows. At least one of them knows. Yeah. So, yeah, right, apparently, god damn it, where's this alley? But, yeah, apparently, he talks her down to two bucks, uh, so she takes him to Mau Mau headquarters. And they go inside to, they do a tour of, yes. this crack house does a tour. It's a, it's a, <laughs> you get it's a, a thing that they do. You get a tour of the crack house. Yep. So cruise. And first in the crack house, by the way, is just a heroin lady, just enjoying heroin, just... Ah, heroin. <laughs> Just inside the door. Mm. That's the first two lines of defense. It's a prostitute and then that girl. That's yeah, that's a, how they Which, to be fair, if I was going to rob another gang and I was like, Poof, and there was like Liza Minnelli and then I'm just, mm, just someone enjoying a Scooby snack, just, mm, I'd be like, all right, I'm not, I don't want to fight this gang. <laughs> I want to see, like, a pre-shift meeting at this crack house. Right? <laughs> like, all right, uh, Liza Minnelli, you're out front doing prostitute. I actually, door. I need cover this week. We, we said you couldn't switch. You have to do it ahead of time. <laughs> I, I logged into There's the... There's a website, and you I have lo- to do it I don't remember hours. my no, password. Do, you don't, you're not trained on the I'm other... I'm not doing any of my not, side heroin work. You, you, roll them. <laughs> I'm doing roll-ups. roll-ups. This is roll-ups. This is something poor waiters do. They roll... <laughs> napkins around themselves <laughs> so yeah for you to enjoy sometimes there's silverware inside of them and everything <laughs> yeah yeah so <laughs> so they go inside the uh the drug den or pat boone does along with his chick and of course all of them are like hey you're the guy from the newspaper on the front page and therefore we like you a lot um what are you just taking the tour yeah I'm just taking no the tour yeah we're just <laughs> hey are you this the guy that and also by the way this bothered me so much one of the gangs was called the egyptian kings Fucking pharaohs. They don't have fucking kings. What the hell? That bothered me so inordinately through this whole fucking movie. 
But anyway, so that's what was wrong with the movie. That was that really. If it hadn't, <laughs> we got a pedantic Boone over well. here. No, that was the problem. So uh, uh, the guy in the hat. I guess he's the main hero. He's the leader. He's the heroine. He's the shift manager. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's like, one, two, three, heroine. heroine. Well, no, one, one, two, three. Heroine. T- How many times? Heroine. You, every time. It's no, on, I would just really like we some would heroin. go one, two. Heroine. Oh, my God. <laughs> every day. Heroine. Every day. This is heroine. exactly like trying to do the timing counts before a record. I got, <laughs> I got to tell you. So, yeah, so uh, the guy tries to give Pat Boone a joint, but he's a preacher, so he's not going to smoke weed. But the little girl is cool with smoking some of it. She loves it. She grabs it, and she smokes it, and her brother's like, why are you smoking marijuana? And she goes, it makes me feel sexy. <laughs> what? La- now, ladies and gentlemen, the stage collectively has absorbed a tremendous amount of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Never in order to feel sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know what's sexy? What's sexy is this. I mean, see? Yeah. See, I'm on, I'm on marijuana right now, and they found it sexy. <laughs> Fucking green room, that's what they call it. I'm gonna, and now it's time for us to meet. I have him in my notes as Morpheus on Whippets. <laughs> the bishops! Yes! This character, oh my God. Okay, we did, last night we did a platinum night, right? We had a, uh, a few uh, listeners come in and watch the movie with us. And it was so much fun because I told Eli, I was like, we have to do this for this movie because the setup on so many of the jokes I want to make would be a hate crime. I have to let them see it. I can't describe to you what Morpheus on Whippets looked or sounded like without being impossibly fucking racist. But I feel like just telling you that tells you everything you need to know. Well, let, let me start with this. Uh, his name is Big Cat. Yes. All right, this gentleman, this gentleman who's the head of the bishops, his name is Big Cat. Why don't, why don't you share with us his first line, His Eli? first line what, is... That, was that his name or his game? What oh, was his game, though? We're about Eli. to find out. <laughs> that was his name. His game is... Heroin. No. 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 <laughs> his first line is, Big Cat's the name and Jitterbuggin's my game. Again... A white guy wrote that line down and said, they speak in rhymes, right? And handed it to a black actor. Was yes. Like, was like, hey, man. <laughs> this is cool, right? <laughs> and that guy was like, sure. <laughs> Are the cameras on? Wait a minute. Go. Cut. All right. <laughs> Seriously, the auditions for the black actors in this movie was like, uh, don't stop rhyming and go. <laughs> yeah, what? Right. And cut. You're next. Next. <laughs> you had to rhyme with go. You said what? So, apparently what we're doing here, the bishops are one gang, the Mau Mau's are the other, and they have shown up to organize the dance choreography for their big gang fight. Right. You know, are we going to snap on three? Are we going to syncopate this or what? And the way they create these rules is hilarious. First of all, they get right out of the way. They're like, well, first of all, if the police show up, we unite and we fight the police. And the guy's like, of course. Right. Yeah, well, duh. Like, Heroin. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then, okay, so each of the leaders of the gang also has with him his warlord, whose job it is to stand next to him and be badass. This is the least threatening room of people ever. <laughs> and it's it, also the... Sm- it's imagine tiny. if all of us got in a closet together. All oh. of us. It's That's there. this they're, fucking they're room. faces are this close. The, Every time, and somebody new has to come in, and it's like me like getting out of the window seat of an airplane to go talk. Hey, guys. Hey. All right. So what, are what, we, what, what, weapons? what weapons should we be doing? <laughs> yeah, and they so decide. Here are the weapons they decide on. What? <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, wait. Before you say the weapons, I've got to point out the guy saying the weapons is Eric fucking Estrada. Now, yeah, yeah right? Yeah. This is Eric Estrada's cinematic debut. What Eli is about to tell you is the first line Eric Estrada was ever paid to say into a camera. What weapons can we use, Warlord Nikki? Chains? Mm-hmm. Blades? Mm-hmm. Straights? What? Seems redundant. Straight razor? Like, blades, obviously, straight razor is yeah. a blade, mm-hmm. but I don't want to give notes. All right. 
They should have gone over the Venn diagram before they yeah. thought about this. <laughs> Bats. Stupid. Yep. Clubs and zips. What? Now I did some research on this. A zip was a homemade gun made out of rubber bands. It is. It is. I have, do I but, have a, a zip? No, me? I was around back then. What if then. Noah I'm pulled out a gun maybe... right now and shot me in the head? <laughs> <Is that> one... <laughs> Just a musket. Man. Man. Anybody got a bullet? <laughs> We can do this. We can make this happen. We can so make... is that what it was? They just take a, a rubber band and a bullet and they'd go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in the fifties, so fucking scared. He in the fifties, really everyone's <laughs> bones were very fragile from folio, so that would kill you. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they all agree that zips are not a good idea. No, they do agree that zips would be taking it a little too far. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people don't like zips <laughs> in the audience. We have an anti-zip, anti-zip crowd here. Yeah, exactly. Store-bought only. Damn right. So <laughs> We're going to have a gunfight after the show, if you guys want to meet us. <laughs> Ten pages no turn and fire kind please. of a thing. Yeah. So, so right, right about now, Pat Boone decides this would be his time to interject. And again, they are impossibly close. He has to like wedge his way in between them like this. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. All right, everybody also... sit on laps. Everybody sit on laps. We're like really tight in here for this gang argument. It could not be more awkward. <laughs> it's amazing. Because he just wanders. And they're in the middle of like, and I'm going to stab you in the heart. And I'm going to break you in the face. And hi. <laughs> Pat Boone, yes, you have a question? <laughs> uh, <coughs> you okay? Jesus loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Boone, everybody. <laughs> Pat Boone. Pat That's really... Boone. He, was, he was just taking the tour at the heroin den. And they are entirely unaffected by this existence. Well, <laughs> What I what amazes of course, again, they recognize him from the newspaper because all the gangsters read the Times. And and he starts telling them about God. <laughs> starts <laughs> he starts telling them about God, and I love too. By the way, his first line, he turns to all the black people and he says, "God cares about you people." Exact words. Exact it was words. it was 1970. It was a simpler time back then. And he goes, he starts going like, "God knows about your alcohols and your marijuana cigarettes and your lustful <laughs> sexual activities." And, and one guy goes, which God? You mean Allah? And he's like, J- just... Dude, g- fuck we're gonna, off. Like, we're, don't be an asshole. We'll cut that in post. Keep rolling, but like, don't... I'm watch. Pat Boone. You think I mean Allah? <laughs> <laughs> so, but so he's figured out... That was milk. <laughs> it better have been milk. All right, so... But he's figured out the key to, to solving gang violence, and that is if you shake the hand of one gang leader and then the other through the transitive property of gang peace, they can't fight anymore. No more crime. Exactly. So he goes and he, he shakes Big Cat's hands, right? Morpheus on Whippets. And then he turns and he has to shake the, the Mau Mau's guy's hands. And uh, that includes Eric Estrada, who slaps the ever-loving fuck out of the dude. <laughs> It's just, and you can tell that was not planned because Pat Boone's just like, because <laughs> he goes, he immediately goes, I have one thing to say to you. And I guarantee you there's a take where he goes, I have one thing to say to you. <laughs> Screaming Eric! like Thomas find a headless body on the street. Yeah, it's amazing. So, also, there was, I, I have to point this out, because the, the, it, it all goes wrong for him eventually. The gangs decide that they're not taking this guy seriously. And one guy threatens another guy, and his threat is, and I quote, I'm going to push your lip up into your nose. <laughs> I don't. It's not that bad. It's honestly not that bad. <laughs> I can never get Eli to do anything with threatening that. So, I, do, I do worse stuff to myself pretty regularly, guys. <laughs> so, so he leaves very Rest upset. The rest of the show is like this. <laughs> so he leaves very upset that he hasn't managed to uh, solve all the crime. Heroin girl demands a theological explanation for her existence on the way out. He can't do that either. Your mouth was sticky useless. just now. Yeah. So, sticky. Heroin. <laughs> 
So Bo Peep and him are doing like a post rap thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she grabs a random trumpet from a car. Was it from a car? She was it from a car? Oh, okay. All right. She reaches so. into a random car and she's like, "Ah, I love trumpets." And he's like, "Put the trumpet back." And he's like, oh, "You never let me do anything." I mean, Archangel doesn't even need the damn thing. Right. But okay, fine. Four uh, movies in a row with a trumpet or a cornet in it for us. In a Four car. In a yeah. It's all on purpose, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Was, if you put all the that's clues the hidden together. connection. So actually, all of our movies are trumpet based, and the first person to figure out how so wins the show. Um, <laughs> You get to take over in episode 101! <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. We're going to lock the first 100 episodes behind a paywall. <laughs> By the way, he's trying to act like he wasn't actually trying to talk me into doing that here. So I also, I love this scene so much. So him and Bo Peep walk away, and they're about to get into his disassembled, reassembled car, and they hear some singing, and he turns around... And there is a church right behind him. Could not more obviously steeple, cross, the whole thing. And he goes, is that a church? <laughs> like you're a fucking priest, man. I wanted so badly for Bo Peep to be like, no, that's taco time. So they use lowercase. T is for taco folks. time. <laughs> How great would it be to replace all the churches in the world with taco time? <laughs> well, well, we, we should have fucking elected Hillary then. Too political. Can't we all just have a good time? <laughs> Ugh, we're we're going to have one on every person. fucking corner. That's all I'm saying. We, we could add one on every corner. Anyway. So, Taco yeah, so time. He is baffled because not only is this a church, but they're singing in a brown person language. But they're, they're singing at the end of a very long Zoom. Okay, so they, they had two lenses in this film. One was that. And the other was... <laughs> One side of the audience gets this joke, by the way. I was like, the other half, these guys over here, I'll have to do the same thing with this door. <laughs> so, well, I, I say half the audience. I'm not talking about the people back home who have no idea what the fuck's going on. <laughs> so, come to the show. <laughs> so, I also I rented a to, theater for you. This, this scene has the greatest, like, crowd noises. Too. So, okay, so he goes into this church, and of course, they're like, oh my God, the guy from the paper that walked into the court? My, oh, shit, autograph. Um, and they're all in love with him. Uh, and I say they're all, it's, it's like 27 people, they're all part of the same family. <laughs> and the dad, the, the dad, who's also the preacher, is like, boy, why would such a handsome, well endowed man like you want to put your penis in my mouth? What? You, what did you say? I didn't, what that's you, what crazy. I was. But also, like, every time the, the crowd does anything, they do it for one and a half seconds and stop. Can we, can we demonstrate? You oh, tell, yeah, by, all, by all means, by all means. I'm going to have a baby. I mean, my wife's going to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, you could not It's have, your turn for the next line. No. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, the planet got destroyed by the Death Star. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you couldn't have silenced that room quicker with napalm. Um... So they say... Just a little Vietnamese girl walks out across the stage. <laughs> I'm saying you smell stand. like victory. It's a good thing. It's a compliment. So, it was a war crime we committed in the 80s, for anyone wondering. <laughs> yeah, Pocalypse later. later. Do, you, do, you, <laughs> do you really think the Vietnam War happened in the 80s? I, I know... So little things. Name a thing that <laughs> happened in history, and it's here. Uh, World War II was 19... 19 is correct. 70. 50? Did you say 50? Heroin. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the, he's talking to the... <laughs> I'm going to have to go... St we're going to have to go so fast through the last half of this movie, guys. Sorry. The, uh, I say the last quick. half. I mean the last nine-eighths. Um... <laughs> That's not a number, is it? That is a number. Uh, so, well, it's a it number. Is, it oh, is, it's it contagious! Is <laughs> Unlearn things! <laughs> Unlearn things! <laughs> I'm sorry someone you know brought you to our show. <laughs> Unlearn things! <laughs> you guys aren't getting the one-man show I'm getting where she's just... Whoever brought her, buy her many drinks. She's just like... <laughs> 
Was that a joke about a person being burned to death with napalm? Oh, wow. This is oh, fun. So this is what you do for a good time on your oh, own. So. The fat one saw me. Nope, nope. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the important takeaway from this scene is that the, the, this, this church finds out that, that poor Pat Boone is sleeping in his car, and they say, well, you can come stay with us. And, and he looks at the little nine-year-old black girl that's following him around, and they're like, yeah, we're, we're, all so, we're already covering that kind of stuff up. You're good. <laughs> You're good. I wanted so badly for her to be like, yeah, I don't have a place. They say she can stay. And I wanted her to be like, I don't have a place to stay either. And they were like, oh, wow. You that's tell. terrible. Huh. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Sad emoji. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now it's time for the fucking rumble. Rumble! And everyone wore their silliest outfits for the rumble. It's, it's, it looks like the cast of Oklahoma versus the cast of the Wiz in a Braveheart LARPing fight. That's what's happening. <laughs> Which is doubly ironic because there probably is some of the cast of Oklahoma oh, and the cast amount. of The Wiz in this scene. Like, yeah, no, that. maybe. Yeah. It's not unlikely. So, <laughs> oh, there's literally a guy dressed like Howdy Doody. It's amazing. It's like, like the whole, the jacket and the whole nine. It's basically what Cecil from Cogdis is doing right now. <laughs> yeah. He's like a master defender or something. Yeah, some, yeah, he baits or Cecil something. Cecil just bursts in through the wall. You defend me, sir! <laughs> Eli's my best friend. <laughs> ah, physical comedy. The kind of thing that you only get by checking the show notes and picking up your tickets to one of our upcoming live shows today. <laughs> you can't let me mime. <laughs> Space work is limitless. <laughs> I will still send that invisible social worker over there. So, yeah, so we have this just amazing bloodless, hitless, violentless fight between these two gangs. And again, I should point out that they're all, they're, they all have machetes and stuff like that. But here's how they're fighting. They're going to come up with a machete and they're like, don't, don't make me use this machete. I totally will. And they do a little sword fight. Too. Oh, no, just, little... It's... <laughs> well... But then there's like another one over here fighting no one because he didn't get matched right. up. Yeah, one guy over here. He, they didn't have any even number or something, so he's just swinging. And then entirely arbitrarily, someone does a 1950s lie down. They're just like, all right, relax. <laughs> relax. My dad had the rickets, okay? We're just going to all make this. All right, I'm out. I'm out of the rumble. I'm this, out. This was a, essentially a fucking pillow fight. I, I have literally seen more violence break out over penguin pants. As a matter of fact, you, you have seen more violence break out over penguin pants I'm so far today. I'm loving those penguin pants. They're so comfortable. <laughs> kill your dad with my car. <laughs> so, so they rumble for a little while, and now it's time for the retreat. But it's not a real retreat. Mm -mm. It's a Parthian shot. So they run off. Is that a war tactic from your yes. time? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's from, my, yeah, from back in my day. <laughs> One guy at home right now. Woo! Parthian shot! <laughs> a Greek guy carrying a trebuchet walks Andrew down the gets stairs. It. Andrew gets it. Andrew gets it. That's why I bring Andrew to every show that, so that someone will get all my archaic word geek 80s references. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they run off, and, and, but they, they've apparently set up a trap. Which it consists of a rope like and five feet of rope. It's that's so it. Silly. It consists of a rope, but it manages to trip <laughs> the entire black gang. All of the gangs in New York City people, get tripped by this rope. Five feet of rope. People line up. They see people trip, and they're like, "Oh, it's my turn." <laughs> Someone gets a frontsies, backsies. They're like, "Oh, fuck off, go!" All of a sudden, Mel Gibson flies off a horse. He comes in. Everybody yeah, got right? tripped by this rope. So they, they rumble a little bit, and then now the bishops are on the run. Uh, but they, too, have a clever trap devised for their pursuers. 
It's like a medieval fire trap. It they is. They go through some trash, and they climb some medieval ladders. Yep. And then they throw Molotov cocktails, mm-hmm. a weapon that was not agreed upon in the work. It was not no, in the thing. No, it wasn't. They didn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in the thing. At the trash where the, the Mau Mau's are, and then they throw bricks at them. Well, okay, so this, this has gotten, this has really escalated quickly at this point. They're like, fuck, man, we were all just like waving machetes and kicking each other. You started setting folks on fire and shit. That's not cool. How did they know who to chase at what moment? Like, how did they know who was chasing? And there's then, a, you miss it, switch? but there's a Korean guy with a yellow flag. And, and it's right oh, and they reverse. Got it. At the very front. I don't, I don't feel like there's a reason why he why was, was Korean. He Korean. The tourist <laughs> groups in the city, there are many of them, and they wear a yellow flag. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke for the New Yorkers. So, <laughs> edit. So, a ba- <laughs> won't get edited. Right, so they, they're doing the Donkey Kong board. Yeah. They're doing the Donkey yeah, Kong board the- where they have to cr- crawl up the ladders with the well, fire. No, it's very Donkey because they're throwing fire at them. There's the whole- barrels, there's fire. There's, barrels. there's literally ladders and then side yep. and then ladder yep. and then... No, you're right. This is probably where they got the idea for Donkey Kong. And the music. Movie. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's Donkey Kong. I don't know how. It's 1958. There's video game music happening. Yep, yep. But eventually the cops manage to, like, break up the whole fight. They unite in running away from the cops. Uh, but as this was all happening, two of the Mau Maus, the, the be Nikki, that's Eric Estrada's character, and Israel, who is the president of the gang, they sneak off from the, from the crowd and they go see the uh, they go see, uh, hat girl. Hat girl. Typical and, gang position. Hat yeah, girl. no, you, you have right. to have a hat girl. You have, a, job, you have a weapon bag girl and a hat girl. Right. Yeah. Her yeah. job is and to give girl. out <laughs> gang uniforms at the end of the rumble. Mm-hmm. Like everyone changes out of their son. She's like, here's your jacket, here's your hat, here's your cane. How was the rumble? Literally, like my wife. Like, How was the rumble? Yeah, no, she. <laughs> Did you have fun? Andrew, was everyone the... nice to you at the rumble? <laughs> to be honest, I don't want you going to rumbles if all they're going to do is bully you. <laughs> Andrew, is this how they did it in the sharks? Is that how the sharks did it? Did they have the same things? Did you, did you, guys, did you guys do the rope bit? Pretty much. How did the... Yeah. <laughs> Heroin. <laughs> so, and, and at first, too, because like, she's just giving them hats and Mau Mau jackets, and at first I was like, is that like Clark Kent's glasses? Now nobody knows who they are or something. They walk but, out past the cops. Well, those are just two gentlemen from the end of Earth Angel. Let them go <laughs> on, on their merry way. So now, okay, so this, this kind of wraps up, and now we hear a little trumpet playing and it turns out that pat boone has decided to take uh you know j- jump up on a soapbox and tell all these fine folks about jesus and the importance of loving god and whatnot uh but there's a cop who's very upset about this he gets stopped by the first ever member of the ffrf yeah apparently it's like no God, you can't do this here man you got to do it and he does the amazing conspiracy theory yes thing. yeah he says you can free speech only counts under an american flag and Pat Boone's like, anyone got an American flag? Like, no question. He's just no, like, yeah. yeah. No, they're like, oh, but if you had a flag. So somebody runs and snaps a flag off of somebody else's car, runs and takes this tiny little flag and holds it over him like this. And the cop's like, fuck. I wanted, to, God, I wanted to see what the range of the flag was. He was like, mm, the juice started all the war. <laughs> I smell different. 9-11. <laughs> Right here. <laughs> so he, he just, so they finally, they let him preach. And I should point out that the whole crowd is just like, let him speak, let him speak. And he's like, I'd love, Dave, they're going to let me speak now. And they're all like, fuck you. Instantly. Instantly they yeah. start heckling. They're like, let him speak, you motherfucker. Yes. For no reason. By the way, I have worked bar mitzvahs that have gone worse than yeah, this Pat Boone speech. The Edinburgh show, for yeah, example, is, Yeah. So, <laughs> you won't talk about homeopathy. <laughs> Boo. So he gets up and he delivers his, you know, I'm just a simple caveman lawyer <laughs> speech forever. Um, and all the gangsters are here too, right? Well, not all of them, but like uh, 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 Morpheus on Whippets is there and Israel and Nikki wander by. And they're all just, you know, it wrapped uh, by his speech, all of them except for Eric Estrada, who's just too badass to buy in all this Jesus stuff, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right, and he goes, he shakes the bishop's hand again, which is weird. Yeah. He's just like, eh, another one? And he's like, all right, man, you're abusing the whole, all right, that's two, we get two. <laughs> and then he goes over to Eric Estrada again, he's like, ah, and then you slapped me last time, and he spits at him, he spits <laughs> in his face. Yeah, 
And the whole crowd reacts to like the like the cartoon characters at the end of Roger Rabbit, just like <gasps> Yeah, they it was it was quite amazing. Also I love that the that the big cat says to him on the way, he's like, No, nah, I'm not ready to turn my life over to Jesus, but Keep trying, man. You're getting close. You're getting close. I'm, I'm almost, almost there. there. I am so close. 80% there to Jesus. So now we're going to cut to the post-Rumble uh, hangout at the, uh, at the HQ, uh, where everyone is insanely beat to hell. Well, they're an escalating amount of injured. Yes. The guy yeah. on the far right, he's got like a man. And the guy on the left, he's got like a And the third guy, I wanted like the third guy to just be like, he has no head. And the fourth guy... <laughs> It's just a pile of ashes that someone's <laughs> patting Jim. Just like, oh, Tony, this rumble did not go well for you, bro. Yeah, apparently Tony. they would. I, I guess maybe straits is a term for chemical warfare. That was the. I don't know what they were going. Yeah, I think they, I think somebody got acid attacked by the yeah. Muslim guy. Maybe. Oh, That's there you happened. go. They they yeah. do that. Those Muslims. <laughs> so, they, what they do? Just. <laughs> It's just factually accurate. I don't know why everybody's. Yeah, exactly. So we we do the flesh eating bacteria pan there. And then Nikki shows up, Eric Estrada's character, and he's really pissed at the one guy who doesn't look like he got the hell beat out of him. And him and Israel step to the side to have an angry couple, how should we punish the children fight? Yeah, they do. It's literally like, I'm sorry, can I speak to you over here for a minute? Okay, I'm this much further away? Yeah, this is fine. I thought we weren't going no, to no, do no. this. We, we, said we, we, would, we read the Dr. Spock right book. No, no. We, and in the Dr. Agreed. Spock book, we, it said when people in your gang don't behave, I feel like behave, that's a weird source a for this to, to <laughs> determine, <laughs> determine how we would handle but the gang. Dr. Glauber said you need to respect me more Again. in these situations. <laughs> this is weird for everybody else because they can hear us from like five feet away. <laughs> we're in a gang. Her- so... <laughs> We literally get that. They're like, w- 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 why were you hanging out with that preacher? You like him more than me? Um, so then they go back to punish the guy, and apparently the, the punishment they've agreed on is a gang spank. <laughs> it's a, it's, they get their belts out, and they're going to like, meh. Yeah, they all like take their belts off, and, and Mingo is the name of the character. <laughs> and because he's Hispanic. And his reaction is to throw himself off a building. I don't want to get hit with a belt, but if everyone in the room right now was like, Eli, we're going to hit you with a belt, I wouldn't throw myself off a building. <laughs> so, I'd be like, no. Well, to be it was, fair. It was probably Rumble 100. So, so, yeah. Yeah, so he falls off of a balcony and dies to death. And he falls, he lands perfectly as chalk outline guy. Yeah, he does. It was yes. super convenient for the he trace was, guy. He's very considerate. Like, he didn't have to move it. Very considerate, gentlemen. I love, too, his like, head is smashed against the concrete, and they're like, somebody call an ambulance and tell him not to bother, I guess. <laughs> he's not going to make it. Um, so now we cut to Eric Estrada late that night having nightmares, or strobe flashbacks to what just happened just in the last happened scene. Just happened in the movie. Bingo. <laughs> yeah, right? And there's a knock at his door. No, I should point out, by the way, that they've got him in the shithole apartment. I guarantee you that same apartment is like 3800 a month right now. Oh, yeah. Minimum. Absolutely. Are you kidding? A kitchen slash bedroom? Well, yeah. You know, it's Luxury. A... <laughs> so, so he goes to the door in his... Diaper? I... He is wearing Heath Enright underwear. That's... I have never seen... I, I feel like that's... I have a question. That's a weird thing. People who were born before things were good... When did underwear start to look like something a person should wear? And when was it just as much cotton you could wrap well, around I your didn't... loins as possible? I don't think that's an accurate depiction of what I... Ha- like, you're I saying you're not it, wearing it tidy whities right does, now? I'm, it doesn't look like a cast, though. It's not... <laughs> are you or are you not wearing tidy whities right I, now? I'm wearing a very tasteful black boxer brief. I'm not going to show. You bought those for the show. I, 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 you, you messed with I me yesterday about this. this. Yesterday, you fucked with me on this and yesterday, and I switched it, and now you look uh, wrong. You know, it's, you know it's, it's amazing how good these jokes work when you switch them up on Eli without telling him about minute. it. Yeah, it's amazing. That's awesome. It's okay. I'll have my revenge. <laughs> you, you will. <laughs> on so, episode yeah. 99. So Pay we well. have this. So we have this amazing moment. Now, the, 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 the knock of the door turns out to be the preacher, who has, I shit you not, shown up at a dude he doesn't know's apartment at 3 in the morning 
to tell him God loves him. It's the best. He's just like, hi, hello. Stupid. Can, <laughs> can I come in? Can, hey. Will you go to the prom with Jesus? <laughs> can, I don't know. Any, <laughs> they Boom have a <laughs> Baby, come back. Yeah. But with the Bible playing on <laughs> so, it. <laughs> so Eric Estrada is not happy with this. No, no. He's like, hey, it's three in the morning. <laughs> Which, to be fair, perfectly normal reaction. <laughs> yeah, right? And, and Pat Boone's response is he goes, you talk tough, Nikki, but inside, you're just like the rest of us. Pink and <laughs> full of blood. <laughs> Organs. Well, he also says, he also says like, you act tr- really tough there, Nikki, but aren't you lonely? And I'm like, you're talking to a 17-year-old boy in his underwear in the middle of the night, bro. <laughs> this is really, really uncomfortable. At which point he screams and slams the door. Yeah, yeah face, right, right, exactly. You notice reasonable. I looked right at Eli when I was saying that? Well, that's, that's how I reacted yeah. when he showed up dressed like a penguin in my bedroom. <laughs> it was really weird. You wake up and Eli is right over, just standing there. Just standing uh-huh. there. Ice cream cone, Heath? The ice cream cone made it extra weird. <laughs> so, yeah, I did. Ha- I did eat it. Was, it. I it did was eat ne- it, but that's not the point. It was Neapolitan, all three flavors. Um, so yeah, so now we cut to heroin girl the next day. She is hitting up Eric Estrada for ten bucks. But again, she asks how the rumble is. <laughs> this is a theme throughout the movie: is that people start conversations like, "So, how was the rumble?" That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We did the rope. We you did, did the, the rope. Yeah, it, it did work. The rope it worked. worked. Yep, it I worked. told you I know. the rope would I work. I know. You were saying the rope would you work. You've got to stop you doubting yourself. It was a good idea. You come up with such great ideas in Israel. It, you helped a lot with that, with the rope. I love this. I love this scene, too. <laughs> so, so she wants to sit with Eric Estrada. Eric Estrada does not want her uh, <laughs> or, it, it, sitting next to him. So she keeps sitting down, and he'll get up, right? So like, she'll sit down, and he'll be like, but you can only do that once without <laughs> then starting to move into very weird locations. So it would, like, it would be like the equivalent of me just going now, like, okay, so uh, I don't really want to talk to you guys. I mean, he climbs into a phone booth. He climbs into a cash Under register. a register at yeah, one point. It's, it's, <laughs> we should also point out, this is a pretty normal scene. She's like, hey, man, give me 10 bucks. I would love some heroin. And he's like, no, don't have any heroin for you because I don't like you. But there is a third character in this scene alfred e newman's grandpa who will never be acknowledged but he'll be this close he'll be right here and it's just like he'll be right here so it's like please nikki you must give me ten dollars for heroin you're just gonna spend it on heroin what, what i know that you will about? oh i need it for heroin i'm just gonna pee in this urinal i brought <laughs> it's right the here. craziest thing in the world have who you guys heard of ass to ass you looking for heroin <laughs> it's second craziest thing in the world um, yeah, so, so he decides eventually that the key here is that he's going to give her the $10, but only if she agrees to stab Pat Boone to death with a switchblade. Yep. So, just to review, 1970s money here, $5, prostitute, two joints, and 25 cents change. How do you think that breaks down, by the way? Like, That's is a good it question. like two dollars for each joint and seventy five cents for the s- sex with the prostitute, right, or, is, or is it like fifty cents? How much would the, it be? I don't. If, in, a la carte. I want to know what it would be a la carte. <laughs> if I'm getting a package deal, is weird. Like, I want to be able to order it normally. <laughs> you <brought> Fingers. It. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she agrees. She's like, okay, I'll kill the preacher, but I need heroin first. And let's be honest, have you ever tried to? Kill a preacher sober. It's way tougher. <laughs> so let's do that after the show, huh? <laughs> that was a funny joke that he just joked about, wasn't it, Andrew? That joke that he just made about that humor. <laughs> Whatever could the audience be reacting to? Does it somehow involve using his microphone as a mock penis? It does. How exactly does it involve that? Well, the only way to know for sure is to make it to one of our live shows. So check the show notes for information for our upcoming shows in Seattle, Austin, Salt Lake City, and Sydney, Australia. So now your little sister knows what you do for a living. How do you feel about that, Eli? Hi, Lily. (laughs) This is fun. (laughs) You should share this on Snapchat. So... Now we cut over to Pat Boone. Uh, he, was, he is having a, he's having a meal with the Mexicans. Fried plantains. 
Well, I love it because he's good. like he's like trying to. They're trying to make it exotic when they're having tacos or something. He's like, "What's this?" And they're like, "That's the napkin." It's flavory. <laughs> Mark Wynn. And he's doing every, and I've been this guy, he's doing every racist white guy eating not hot dogs reaction to everything. <laughs> he's like, ooh, it's muy bueno. <laughs> Just, I, I'm glad you like it, don't please. Oh, what, what do you call this? That's a fork. All right, yeah. <laughs> so, but this is where they come up with this great idea. They realize that if they now it's, this is um, this is Hector who is the the Hispanic priest that we met earlier. This is Pat Boone, the little nine year old girl that he's just decided to adopt, and uh, and the, a police sergeant that we met in an earlier scene and didn't bother to tell you guys about. Sorry about that. Um, he doesn't matter. So no, he really he really very in much fact, doesn't. In fact, in the only scene in which he could matter, we'll learn he just comes out and he's like, "I'm gonna go." So, <laughs> so this is where they realize that if they really want to solve crime what they're going to have to do is throw a youth party and invite all the gangs under one roof together what could go wrong just to be clear the protagonist of this movie has the exact same plot as jimmy does in south park (laughs) it would be great we'll get marshmallows and ginger ale (laughs) and all and all the gang violence so yeah, so they decide to have Gang of Palooza, and he goes, and I love, at this point he goes, we'll get all the beboppers and jitterbuggers, Pat fucking Boone saying this line, we'll get all the beboppers and jitterbuggers together. Yeah. Still just, better than Firefest. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted them to cut over to like a different gang doing the Charleston as they rob a bank. They've yes. got like <laughs> walkers instead of canes. Yeah. Oh, there you go, there you go. Yeah, that's another thing we hadn't mentioned, that everyone, every gangster has a cane. They all carry that's canes. Like, uh, yeah. That's a thing. Who the fuck like, knew? Um, so, okay, meanwhile, Matt, back at Mau Mau HQ, um, Eric Estrada's trying to get a little alone time uh, with him and his joint and his buddy, because you got to have And they're doing, like, for... bro talk about him convincing a heroin addict to kill a man? Yeah. It's like, no, 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 dude, listen to this. Listen to what happened last night. Just between you and me, last I night, know. I was like, Mary... Just for my birthday, will you kill the preacher? <laughs> did she do it? She did it. She did it. She did it. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> it's so weird. Funny. It's very like women can't live with them. Can't convince them to kill a man for ten dollars worth of heroin. <laughs> Think we'll ever get a woman president? So why can't know. we just keep it fun? <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, it got significantly less fun that night. Who knew? <laughs> so, yeah, so now we cut back to David. He's gotten a phone call from his wife who is pregnant. And it, basically this is so that, like, the killer lady can show up, right? The, the, the uh, heroin girl who's supposed to kill him can show up. And he can be on the phone going like, wow, you're going to have the baby any minute. Sure would be a shame if I got stabbed in the throat. Can I help you? <laughs> and then he, 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 like, cuts his wife off who is about to give birth. He's like, yeah, no, sorry, I have a junkie here who needs to talk to me. It's kind of rude that I'm talking to you instead. Excuse me. So, Excuse me. Yeah, no, I uh, just a second. Yeah, and then he talks to the... the yeah. He hangs up on his... He hangs wife. up well, that's on how his, it worked back then, though. Yeah, he yeah. hangs up on his birthing wife. He's like, hon, I get it. Push. Really? <laughs> Mi- miscarriage. Oh, well. You know, win some, lose some. All right. <laughs> Don't forget the porterhouse when I come home. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Perfect. So, all right, so, like, she's about to stab him, then she realizes there's a police sergeant in the room, and she's like, can we go in the other, this other room where there's not a cop, and I can talk to you? And she, she's like, yeah, okay. She's like, can you close your eyes and walk into this dark corner here and uh, maybe just hold your arms up like this? If you were to point to your heart, where would it be? <laughs> <laughs> and Pat Boone, by the way, is totally just like, yeah, no heart here. Right here, here. I'm going to unbutton my shirt. I would say it would be right there. If anyone but if you were to trying to reach it, you'd want to come up, up from the... Underneath. Up into the... Yeah. So... <laughs> what did you want to talk about? <laughs> Heroin. Heroin. So... And also, we should point out, too, this, this character, her name is Rosa, the heroin girl. She has the most amazing acting dichotomy. It is either screaming at the top of her lungs or mumbling. Yeah. Those are the only two modes she has. And she moves between them quite randomly, and sometimes with, like in mid-sentence. 
Um, so they, she talks to the preacher for a little while, but he's not helping. Uh, and he's not going to give her $10 for heroin, so she decides she's going to have to go ahead and kill him. Just as soon as she can open this switchblade. For 45 minutes. The, she, takes, she takes out the knife for the rest of Act 2 and most of Act 3. Yeah. And then there's a sequel about her finishing taking out the knife. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's like an infomercial for, like, Ron Popeil's, like, easy stab knife. And she's like, blah, like, blah, knife. Just there's got to be a better way. It. <laughs> she gets lemon juice in her eye somehow. <laughs> like, you know. A milk carton just explodes on a nearby <laughs> table. So, so she get, pulls out her knife, and, and then she goes to stab him, but she only cuts his shirt or whatever. And then she runs off and threatens to stab herself. And this is where we meet the magical black lady of the movie. But just to be a little different, they made her a magical Hispanic lady. Yeah. And she mad maxes the knife out of Rosa's hand. She's like, just walk away. We will spare your lives. Just walk away. <laughs> And Rose is like, ew. Well, but she isn't. But she isn't, though. That is such a bizarre part of this scene, is that they actually they, they, like, have her walk up and hug her and everything, but still holding the knife. She holds the knife until the scene's over. Yeah. So you're expecting any minute for her to just stab that uh, lady in the back. The next scene, we see her sleeping with the switchblade like a security blanket, just me, 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 me. <laughs> I wanted to somebody take out a switchblade and just like a cross pops out. Oh, <laughs> shit. Would have been so the much cross better. The the switchblade. Everything is the name that of the movie. happened in this movie. It's bad writing. So now, of course, <laughs> you, you think that was again. It's so, like the biggest problem in the movie. Now we get this. Uh, we get the uh, the Rosa detoxing montage, which, as we all know um, from from movies, is sweating in a bed for most of a montage. Is this right? not a normal amount of sweating? <laughs> I feel like I detox from heroin like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I sleep. If movies have taught us anything, it's that a bad flu and kicking heroin, the exact same experience. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. It's it's just like, one is a little writhier than the other, but yeah, other than that. So now that we've seen the requisite Hollywood cleaning up from addiction scene, a.k.a. managed to writhe sweatily on the same bed for an entire montage, I suppose we can pause for a quick break, but before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will Bo Peep and the Preacher Man just cut the tension and fuck already? Will Pat Boone fully inflate the balls for the championship game against the Colts? He looks just like Pat, uh, Tom Brady. It's, it's really crazy. How much bush do you suppose Heroin Girl is rocking? Find out the answers to considerably less questions and less when we return for the totally true they promise conclusion of The Cross and the Switchblade. <laughs> They call me Mr. Scoops, because I like to shoot hoops. Now, when do we rumble? Well, Daddy-o, the way that we go, neither rain nor the snow, will be Wednesday for show. I actually I actually have a dentist appointment on Wednesday. Uh, seriously? Dude, take a hint. That's so obviously... Oh, well, sorry, okay. Uh, when it comes to beef, if, if you want to fight heef, you're going to need to be Thursday. D. Not even close to a rhyme. Not even are you, close. Are, are, D. I said. Are you D. fucking serious? I'm sorry. Dude. I thought it was a gang war, not a rap battle. I am so <sighs> sorry about this. I, like, a little professionalism is all that I ask, man. I I understand, and again, I it's, am mortified. It's it's, it, it's fine. Thursday is fine. Okay, okay. When we do the stepman, with what kind of weapon? Oh shit, me. Um. Yeah. Guns, forks, and knives. And each other's wives. Oh, seriously, man. wives? You want to use wives I, in the game? I don't now? know, man. What what rhymes with knives? This is the least professional war council I have ever been to. Barris, put it in a memo. <laughs> okay, welcome to the second war council. Hopefully, all the kinks have been worked out. They have. They have. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. So we're doing it Thursday. Which weapons? Uh, knives, sticks, bats, bricks, zips, chains, window panes. Motherfucker. Larry, we that had a t- whole t- meeting about this. That t- What rhymes with chains? It doesn't have would- to rhyme. It doesn't have to rhyme. Right. right. Sorry. Sorry. But I had to rhyme still. <laughs> And we're back from the People's Improv Theater in New York, New York! (laughs) 
Now, first bit ran a little long, so we're going to have to go a little quick through this uh, second, uh, third act of the show. So we're it's such a good act, though. We're going to rush through it. I feel I know, bad. No, I hate that. We, I, we're going to have to go long. Act. We have to make this a two-parter. You guys coming back next week? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we're going to start this one off with the Mau Mau's driving around uh, where they see the, the marquee for the big gang party, party? thing. And they literally, they're like, ooh, 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 gang party. <laughs> that seems fun. Can we go? <laughs> I love, too, that the one character goes like, he's like, man, that preacher, you sure got to admire how brave he is to keep doing that. Keep in mind, this is based on a story written by the guy that that character is talking about. That guy wrote that line about himself for another character to say. He's just got a tape recorder with an ex-gang member. And now, did you fellers ever talk about how brave I was? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man, all the time. Well, we we couldn't stop talking. Knew it. Now... (laughs) Now, apparently, they're on their way to uh, Mingo's funeral. Mingo is the guy who threw himself off of the thing to, so as not to get spanked earlier. Um, so they go to Mingo's funeral, but the bishops are Elmer Fudd stalking them. It's On so a, good. They might as well be behind the gravestones, and as the Mau Mau's are walking, like the gravestones are doing, <laughs> <laughs> follow along behind them. It is hilariously comic. Just playing also, the Pink Panther on sacks yeah. themselves <laughs> as they're dressed Bowling. like headstones. But yeah. <laughs> also, I gotta say, I love the, the these gangsters in their funeral suits, especially Eric Estrada. See, my last time I was at a funeral, they didn't even have a maitre d', and it was weird. Nobody knew where to <laughs> sit. If you saw the movie, that was really funny, by the way. I was just gonna <laughs> throw that out. Um, so yeah, so now they get that they 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 have a big rumble there in the cemetery, right? Mm. Um, and this is apparently this scene only exists so that we get to see Eric Estrada's masterful stab walking. Eric Estrada will spend the next 45 minutes of the movie stab struggle walking to everything, like to work, just <laughs> order something, <laughs> washing his hands, <laughs> brushing his teeth. <laughs> and the, I love the cops that show up at this rumble. Oh, yeah. They show up in um, two seconds. They, show, they were clearly they, fucking they were, in that cemetery. They were walking the graveyard beat. They were walking the cemetery beat. <laughs> graveyard they might as well fall in from the ceiling and just <laughs> stop this gang rumble. You know, graveyard guys, time. this is a Christian movie, and in Christianity, the dead often do come back. We might as well have someone stationed right there. Just make sure. Still dead? Still dead. <laughs> Still dead? <laughs> <laughs> so That's the priest Eli got earlier. <laughs> So he uh, he stab walks his way into an alley and lays down to die. Um, but just then, Bo Peep comes along. Now, it's gonna this is gonna lose a little without the visual. But if you can imagine, his head is cracked open like a watermelon, bleeding every fucking where. And Bo Peep walks up and goes, "Are you hurt?" How did she find him? Where are these hidden alleys that they... He's in just like a magical, like Donkey Kong, you would walk through like a... Like a I wanted like a, a, wa- I wanted a he's minotaur. In like alley, he's in like alley nine and three quarters somehow. <laughs> and she just like finds I him. I wanted a minotaur to pass by, see him, and just be like, not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so she's like, do you want me to go get help? And he, and he doesn't answer. He just looks at her like, what the fuck do you think? So she says, she thinks to herself, okay, like, stabbed man needs help. Preacher. 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 Heroin. That's the way to go. <laughs> Heroin would be way more helpful than the way preacher. Way more helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, Pat Boone runs down the alley. Pat Boone was apparently three feet away. Yeah. Because he runs down the alleyway and he's like, hey, looks like you need a doctor. <laughs> Why the hell am I here? One second, Eric comes back. He's got like a birthday clown, and the clown's like, Hoo-hoo! You need a doctor! <laughs> Just a series of more and more ridiculous jobs. <laughs> so, but now, but he doesn't want anybody's damn help. He can stab, struggle, walk all on his own. So he goes, I don't need your help. And they're like, Oh, okay. And don't help him. Yeah, they respect his witches. He's like, no, I don't like you. And they're like, fine, bleed to death. (laughs) When you come around, I'll be here. 
Yeah. So he, so he wanders off, and Rosa goes to follow him because she wants to help him out too, but not really. Because they get, to the, they get to his apartment, and she decides that rather than dealing with the visible intestines, she would rather talk, talk to him about how the preacher really helped her a lot, and really some of the things he said to her made a lot of sense. Women. <laughs> Got blood pouring down your face, so guess what my week was like? <laughs> I know, I know, but I just want to tell you this one thing real, real quick. Okay, I, I need to tell you a story first. <laughs> you remember my friend Allison? She's so funny. So funny. She's so funny. <laughs> so, she's fun. so Allison's funny. And of course, also, it seems like it, through the course of this scene, I'm, I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep you out of trouble. Uh, so through the course of this scene, not only to, to, is she more concerned with the preacher and Jesus than the fact that he's stabbed, but eventually, so is he. Yeah. He just ignores his spleen, like, popping out of his stomach, and he's like, you know what? You've gotten really weird since you kicked heroin. I just want to say that. You've changed. Yeah. He's like, I liked you better when you were on the junk, and I'm thinking, like, if my wife was going to be either a Jesus freak or a heroin addict, I think I'd, you know, I mean, at least they writhe when they're on heroin. That was right. kind of sexy. Uh, but it's not tax deductible, so you got to consider. Oh shit! You got to consider the tax implications. Yeah, no, I had, I had not honestly thought about that at all. As long so, as you no, don't run right. out of heroin. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Then she might. Well, you know, I have some preachers that I could use. So she she's very unhappy about this. And you know how when you get in a fight with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, and you just immediately run to your heroin dealer. <laughs> We've all been there. It's a hard time for all of us. But here's the weird thing. The music they set this like serious moment to is like la 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 la. la. It is the crazy. She's licking a lollipop as she skips to a heroin dealer. <laughs> That's really tells weird. Tells me I'm gonna get on smash. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Woman. Also, can we talk a little bit about her? He, he, if you had to describe her heroin dealer in one word, what word would that be? Um. I'm going to say obsequious. Is that, well, that's fairly typical. Is that an appropriate word for a heroin, for a dealer? heroin he's a, dealer? He's very yes. attentive <laughs> service. to the point of overly attentive as a heroin dealer. Service. Yeah. I, want to, I want to meet anyone who loves their job as much as this heroin dealer loves his job. <laughs> he, gets, he greets her like Heath gets greeted at McDonald's, just like, oh, <laughs> oh bring me welcome all again. the options. Oh, Heath's here, everybody. Heath's like cheers. <laughs> but with slightly less heroin. Yes. <laughs> That's really what happened to Diane. Not a lot of people know that. So, I was wondering why Rhea stayed so skinny. Um, so, yeah, so now the, the heroin dealer, like, he has a little, like, I don't know, fucking Cajun chef moment while he's making the hair. He's whistling to himself. It's like Rachel Ray with hair. <laughs> yeah. Like, dun, 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 dun. And the secret ingredient is baby laxative. Yeah, so, no, but it, the whole thing plays like Iron Chef heroin. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like and, anal retentive heroin chef. And <laughs> now you wrap the used needle in a paper towel. Fold them, unbroken. Now I wrap it in I want to see an episode of Iron Chef where the secret ingredient is heroin. Because <laughs> you know there's one guy that would just start right away. <laughs> so much pressure on that cooking show, he'd just be like, I'm making a heroin souffle with a heroin remoulade and a heroin pasta with a heroin... You just committed like eight felonies. I know, but I want to... I want to beat Mario Batali. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon Ramsay just slaps it out of his hand make it again <laughs> look at this heroin look at this heroin <laughs> but of course now so she takes her heroin but of course she's all Jesus up now so it doesn't work it doesn't work you can be she is heroin it. proof mm. <laughs> she's I wanted that to catch on from this movie so badly like the snake venom just like someone walks out, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you the power of holy shit, motherfucker. <laughs> Woo. Bring me a bass guitar. 
So, so now we got to go check in on Gang of Palooza. So uh, the, um, the ramen show needs a new angle. I'm just saying. I think ramen show needs a new angle. <laughs> Cooking ra- heroin with he. <laughs> There's no two syllables. I was trying to think of like I'm like all the fucking all the slang terms for it are one syllable. God just, damn it. There's no two. There's no da da. Yeah. So, just taste the. So if anybody has heroin. a new slang term for heroin that they'd like to throw out two syllables, please. Um, so. Cook in black tar with me. Thank you, thank you. I wouldn't. By I the wouldn't way, when, when you hear that, that edited, it's going to sound like I came up with that. But I just want to. I'm going to throw that out there. I want to be honest with you. It feels racist. <laughs> now it does, right? Now it does. Why? Like, because it's like, oh, black tar. Like, because it's tar, but it's all. Why has it got to be? I'm not comfortable. I'm less I w- comfortable. I will explain to you after the show why they call Cooking it Cooking some tar, tar with heat. <laughs> but then you're just... <laughs> the kind of... Taste the heroin. Where's the spoon? <laughs> Aha. Aha. <laughs> so, so we go to It'll check in on Gang of Palooza. And nobody's shown up for Gang of Palooza, guys. They're really bummed out. Yeah, they are. They are. But this is when Sergeant Palindrome, or whatever the fuck his name was says, hey, you know what would be a great idea? If you're going to get all the gangs together, why not have no cops anywhere? Yeah, I'm going to go. <laughs> See, if everyone had a chain, a zip, a knife, and a gun, we wouldn't need cops. Second Amendment. Second Amendment. Right? <laughs> Newtown was a false flag. Who's with me? Yeah! Eli's with me. So False flag. So we, 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 come, we clear that up because it's very important that we learn that they're not going to be, you know, the, the, uh, the, the cops aren't going to be at the gang of Palooza or whatever. So now we cut to the, to the gangs staring each other down again. And they're in perfect semicircles. Yeah. <laughs> getting ready for this gang fight. And I really wanted to see them lining up just like okay, little so squid. Bottle cap. Back it. Back, bottle cap. Back shush, it up a little bit. You, there you go. Now, but, Hold but on. I, got, I, got my, I have a switchblade. I have a switchblade with a protractor. But, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be even. This is serious. Count off by threes. At... One, two, three. <laughs> All right. So, threes over here. <laughs> Odds on this side. So, yeah. So, now it's, it's time for the, them to figure out where they're going to do the new... Sequel to the rumble for the rumble that they did before that spilled over into the funeral. Right. Mm. And yeah. they, they decide the problem sense. was there was too much escaping. <laughs> so they're going to use the youth rally with the jitterbugs as a cage match. Yeah. And they're serious. You can bring zips this time. The zip guns are in. Yeah, they say, they say that's. I, and I so wanted a, like a gun making montage, you know, like <laughs> push it to the limit, <laughs> limit. Just shooting rubber bands, not good enough. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> and just finally kill someone. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see a commercial for the Nerf zip gun. Just like a bunch of kids diving over couches, their hands missing from exploding. <laughs> Some kids babes. <laughs> Nervous Are gun. you getting ready for a rumble? <laughs> <laughs> there was a Nerf gun that you pretended to surrender and you shot. Yes. A gun. That's a weird toy for a child. <laughs> it violates the Geneva Convention in a Nerf gun. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> Who was the first guy to be like, all right, guys, we've made 80 Nerf guns. And by the way, there's only two real guns. So how about one where you lie about being done fighting and then you shoot someone in the face? <laughs> Also, okay, so now it's, it's time to head over to Gang of Palooza. And I, 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 wanna, I don't want to say this line, but I'm going to say this line. So the first gang shows up, the, uh, the Mau Mau show up, and they all sit on one far side of the church. And now the bishop show up, the all-black gang shows up, and Bo Peep looks down and says, and I quote, This is the first time I don't want no soul brothers coming to my party. Was that racist? Was it? I feel. I feel like a party of all white people can be fun. <laughs> Yale is fun. The Yale's Republican a fun place. party. <laughs> so, <laughs> you've gotten so political, Eli. Since you really, since you Dial joined the show, we're on the show back. Yeah. Dial it back. So, 
<laughs> I love too that you get the okay. Now we know that these are gangs, right? We know that it's the the one gang sitting on one side, the other gang sitting on the other side. But to the people who are in this church, because apparently some people were just there for the service that night. <laughs> All they see is a bunch of black people come in and sit down. Are they, and, are they like well-behaved little gangs? Like, what are they doing at Gang of Palooza? Are they just they thought it was a service? They just were really into the church service. They were into I the guess service. so. But here's the crazy thing. The Mau Mau's come in, and they've got knives and chains and zips and canes, and they're just like, oh, nice, they've got matching jackets. <laughs> and the black people get in, and every white person there is just like, nope, 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 nope. And the movie does not acknowledge it at all. Amazing. And yeah, and we got to point out that the, these kids are not just like sitting there going like, all right, at four o'clock, everybody pulls out. The, they're waving their machetes at each other from across the room. I'm going to stab you later. This gang and fight we're going to have is going to be fantastic. Find me. If you miss me in the gang fight, <laughs> find me so we can stab it at each other. It was awkward when we didn't line up evenly last time. And I didn't I have had a no, partner. I was just... It looks stupid. People are gonna make it was fun like of Parachute. Me. This is a bad movie. I had to be partners with the teacher. Because <laughs> I was so popular. So I got a lunch table all to myself. <laughs> the other kids were intimidated, right, Mom? <laughs> I've always been this way. So. There wasn't always a podcast. <laughs> Most of the time it was just me and her, and I was like, do you like me back? And she was like, no. <laughs> All right, next time we invite Heath's mom, and we roast her. <laughs> so I love to, okay, so this is what they've got. They've literally got, again, they've got two gangs openly brandishing large knives and firearms. And they look to the preacher, and he's like, man, that's a pretty tough crowd. He goes, maybe we send Mary out there to sing. Literally. They send us. That would be like if you guys were all, like, waving guns and firing them in the air and everything. And I'm like, hey, Lucinda, you wanna, do you want to do you, maybe a, a song first? <laughs> and she comes out, and it's not even like, I, it's just like, oh, crack and love the river, river, river. Boy, that's a hell of a falsy you got there, bro. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and now, I'd like you to stand like... on that stool and sing us an Irish song. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so, okay, so she goes out and then she sings and she can't do it and she runs off or whatever. And now it's time for the preacher man to come out there and, and show us what he's got. And you know what'll really get him? A collection. <laughs> he goes, you know what I need to do? Ask this room for money. Well, this is the most amazing accidental m metaphor in the history of Christian movies. Because the way he's going to get the gangs on his side, right, he sends them out with these little collection buckets or whatever, and he, t and he gives them to the gang members, right? And he's like, I want you guys to go out and get money from everybody in this crowd. So for like three minutes, we watch these guys walk up one after the other to people and just go... More. And, and, and armed men. And then there's somebody that put it. You're supposed to put money in my hand. You fucked up my bed, but that's all right. You, but they give them money, and then they would still give them more money. And, and I'm like, that is church. Wow. They're not usually this honest, y'all. To and be were, fair, yeah, that is way nicer than prosperity gospel. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. No, just, we'll just stab you if you don't give us money. Oh, you know? okay. <laughs> don't give us your rent. <laughs> This Creflo dollar comes in. Let me show you how to do it, motherfucker. <laughs> so you got to shake it. You got to shake the key. It's in the shake. <laughs> I have. I noticed jet. you put imaginary money in his imaginary thing. Whatever. 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 Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So and and this. So here's the thing. He says, take all the money and go through the back door where nobody can see you, and then come back around and give it to me. Right. So then they walk out and they're like, so you guys want to just take this money now or like we can just throw it in a pot and wait, wait, wait. rumble? He, he has a good idea. Wait. He has a good idea. You know what would totally blow this preacher's mind? What's that? If we just gave him the money. I don't understand why that would blow his mind. He'll never see it coming. But 
We also won't have any money, though. One second, let me add to that idea. We all become Christians. Oh, shit. <laughs> Literally, it's just like, oh, he'll never see it coming. So they wander out with the popcorn bucket. Yeah, and they're, and they're like, like, boy, this will fuck up his rhetorical device. <laughs> and he's like, thanks. <laughs> And you can see the actors looking at each other like, I, was I don't a, get... I don't what, know, we just lost I, a bunch of money. I don't understand. <laughs> did we do it? How much are you getting paid to do this movie? <laughs> so, was it as much as the prop money in the popcorn buckets? Because I don't know if you know this, but you can get two... For five, five one, four seventy-five, <laughs> in fact. I can get you a deal, though. Can you? Yeah. Can you get, like, pieced out? Or, like, Three does it have marijuana to be all the, three? cigarettes. Wow. Six bodies. All right. No change. Done. Ah! Done. Thank you. Good night. Wait a minute. Hold on. So, yeah. So now it's time for the big end sermon of the movie. Now, luckily for you, we're running a little low on time. So we're not going to spend the 87 years on this goddamn sermon that the movie does. Again, we're not going to be able to do it justice because it's a sweet scene. <laughs> it's amazing. We're going to have to fast forward through it. All we really need to talk about <laughs> is what happens at the end of this sermon. So he's like, Jesus is great and Jesus loves you. And the real cowardice is not to love Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what this else? really gets to Eric Estrada. Yeah, no, Eric Estrada, we, we close in on him and he's just... He's right. And the it mo- is great to love Jesus. And look, we all know there's one thing that happens when you've really been moved by someone speaking. And that is that a high school picture day background appears behind them. It's the lasers. The lasers thing. Yes, the lasers just like. Okay, they literally freeze frame. Yes, with that look on his face, they freeze on that. And then lasers appear behind him. And Eric Estrada the whole time is going, oh my God, it is the single most amazing instant in any movie we have ever watched. And I think anybody that was there for Platinum Night will back me up on this. Yeah. Oh my God. I loved it so fucking much. And then, okay, so he has his whole big Jesus talk. Eric Estrada comes to Jesus. And now Abdullah the character that asked him earlier if he meant Allah when he was talking about God, Lame steps night. up and he's like, yeah, no, I get it, preacher. It's my turn now. I mean, I get it. Jesus is awesome and everything. You guys still want a gang fight? How did you freeze like that? No, we're just going <laughs> to gang fight. We're in a gang fight. It's weird. We need to Where do did those lasers come from? But yeah, but now it's time for the gang fight. So all the gangs jump up and they get start running towards each other with their machetes out. But just then, don't you say this, better no stab it and kill it. That's... Eric Estrada acting hard again. <laughs> and everyone reacts the way you did, which is... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Off-putting. <laughs> These actors... <laughs> I don't want to... I'll stab at him. No. <laughs> the actors, they're so good. They can act at one or eleven. Yes. And that's all they can do. And the jumps between is like... They start acting violently. <laughs> like, it's like, did you ever see somebody drive a stick wrong? <laughs> and it's lurching and stopping and lurching yes. and stopping. That's the acting in this movie. That's how I Throughout. drive an automatic. Because <laughs> I'm hitting people. As a... so, so now, it's, so Eric Estrada jumps up <laughs> and tells everybody. It's good you don't have a car anymore. It's, that's, that's a good thing. We appreciate that, by the way. Well Bob. done. Very well important. Done. So, I also should point out that in this in this scene, that the music is so incredibly fucking literal. It's so specific. The, the name of the song is like "God Loves Eric Estrada." God loves. <laughs> the last not. line of this song is literally. God loves Nikki Cruz. That's the character's name. That's the character's, yes. character's name. Yes. And now he loves Jesus too. <laughs> and now the credits are about to come on. Credits. It's, it's, it's amazing. So, but of course, Abdullah, because he's a Muslim, he's a Lamanite, is. <laughs> A lot of knowledgeable Mormons. In the yes. Crowd. <laughs> if there's one thing that the Book of Mormon, reading the Book of Mormon, gives you, it's all the racism. <laughs> so, so everyone is is super affected by this, except for Abdullah, 
who is immune, obviously, from the uh, Lamanite-ness. Um, so he says, yeah, no, I get it, but I'm still going to stab you. So he runs to stab Eric Estrada, gets him right in the stigmata. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but he's not bothered by it. He's just like, damn. And so... So he gets the knife back from Abdullah, and they wrestle around a little bit, and he says, hey, look, I could stab you in the neck, but I'm not going to because I'm Christian now. Well, he says, I've got your knife now. I can take it from you, or I can give it back to you. And I wanted him to be like, I mean, I would prefer if you gave it back. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be honest. I'm going to use it to stab you. I thought that was, <laughs> was going to be more dramatic. You just answered kind of calmly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not going to stab you. So... Is the movie over? <laughs> it's, 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 we're, we're super close. So, yeah, so he, uh, he lets Abdullah go, and now everybody decides to be a Christian, and everybody just clamors to the front to get their Bibles. And, and he's handing out these little tiny, like, um, the, the uh, Gideon Bibles, and they're like, give me one of them big Bibles like you got, preach. I can take it. And so he starts handing out all the giant, and everybody's like, oh, my God. There's even the, the character named Israel is like, I'm in the Bible, y'all, every page. <laughs> That's literally the line at the end of this movie. It's unbelievable. I so wish I was just making that up. And now, and, 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 and that's it. Right now, all the kids are Christian. The movie can wrap up. We get a quick, bizarre little voiceover from Pat Boone. Okay. This is the craziest moment of the whole movie. It's the very end. Can I be the homeless guy? I okay, want to be the homeless guy. Yeah, it's okay, the very end, gonna, and Pat Boone's guy. doing a voiceover, and he's like, yes, I changed everybody's mind, and they all became Christians. And Now, there's an adult homeless guy here, and he goes, and he's like, they all became Christians, and I always knew that the... He just walks away from the normal exactly homeless guy. what happens. He's just like, oh, I mean, you're not a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like the Neapolitan ice cream of humans. <laughs> <laughs> Scoop across. So, I love how we're, like, we're now suddenly involved in your fucking fights. When the hell did that? Where's Tom? Where's Tom? When the hell did that happen, man? Come on. So, so that's it. That's all we get out of this movie. Now, Hollywood has obviously seen a number of infamous gangs throughout the many years. Uh, the Dead Rabbits, Dillinger's Gang, the Goonies, etc. So, to, thank you. Thank you. One for the Goonies. So, to, to wrap things up tonight, I want you to think of the, the list of like the most intimidating gangs in cinematic history. And then I want you to tell me where the gangs from this movie would fall. What would come right before them and right after them, for example? Hmm. All right, I'm going to say A. Ryan Brotherhood. It's just a bunch. It's just a, it's like a few people I know named Ryan. They're called A. Ryan Brotherhood. So on that note, I'm going to go with like scarier than Stephen Baldwin in Loving the Bad Man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But less scary than the Newsies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, on that note, we're going to bring episode 95 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Anna Bosnick for helping out with the sound, Lucinda Illusions, and Razor Wax for helping out with all of the merch. Huge thanks to Morgan Clark, who's going to make this all sound good later. And a huge thanks to the whole team here at the People's Improv Theater. And, of course, to all of you for coming out. You guys are awesome. And until next week, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Close. Somebody played this movie for a bag of stem cells and they turned into Ted Nugent. Okay, mine is serious. This is honest. The Muslim character was the only one completely beyond redemption. There are 90 minutes of cut footage of Pat Boone saying the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you, thank you. And now, for your viewing enjoyment, Eli will perform a cartwheel. <laughs> really?
<laughs> and he never did one again. <laughs> or before. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved.